so in the old days, a person, remember, um, uh, it's a wonderful life, <laughs> Bailey savings and loan, all right? And they'd come in and, you know, Martini would want to buy a house, and so they would use Fred's money to get the house, you know, and, and so that, you know, they bought a house and they borrowed money, and there was accountability within community or within the state, um, within the county. And so, um, and there was actually some connectiveness when people, when they faulted on their loan, they knew that they were actually impacting people right next door. In Canada, um, it's been that way a long time, where real money going across from deposits into loans, long-term deposits going into loans, knowing that some of them will turn over. Now, you fast forward to, we're going to create this type of loan, and we're going to do mortgage-backed securities, MBOs. Okay? So now the lender doesn't own the loan anymore, so the lender since they don't own it, they don't really care, <coughs> frankly, if that loan goes sideways or not, because they have sold it. They got a certain amount of money, they originated loan, they sold it, have a nice day. And so these people who are holding these mortgage-backed securities are looking at that and saying, okay, what do we got? And um, then they said, well, we could do um, CDOs, collateral debt obligations. And so, lots of slicing and dicing of this commodity, this mortgage thing. And at the end of the day, they were just putting these loans into different tranches and saying these loans are performing better and these loans have a higher interest rate. And so, what, what the premise was, was that the collateral was the real estate and the borrower qualifying frankly, was secondary. And so that's what took us to all the stated income, stated assets, because the real estate was the holy grail. The real estate was the thing that you owned, that you got. And so that was, the, that, that was, the, that was covering the bet, okay? So when money is free, when you're giving away something for free, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to take that. So money was free, right? So when that started to happen, there, everybody was going after the money. And by the way, the, the banks and the, uh, and the investors, they were hungry for this because they could, they could package these up, they could sell these in the secondary market, and because they were secured by real estate, they had collateral instead of an uncollateralized loan, they had this protection of real estate or the illusion of the protection of real estate that it was sold all over the world. And so what happened here also was being replicated in other countries. And as you, I, you know, I'm just giving you a little bit of the background again about some of the stuff that has happened to get us to this, this storm. So now we have these loans. We have these borrowers going in for these type of loans. Everybody is getting these loans. And the prices are going up because people are saying, you know, you got three or four people saying, I want that house. And I qualify because the bank says I can go zero down and get an 80-20. Or I don't have to give my income. I was in a cab in San Francisco and I was talking to the driver and he was telling me about his concern about his $650,000 mortgage. <laughs> the cab driver. So anyway, so we had all these people vying for these homes, right? So the prices are going up, right? They're going right through the roof. Builders are making a ton of money. Everybody's making money. Multiple offers on homes, all this other stuff. And so suddenly, what was the security became really not a security because the values were not sustainable value. So you tell me, if I go to Vegas and I buy a thousand square foot condominium for $800,000, all right, and 10 other people do that, are those comparables or is that a herd of stupid? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, I'm thinking herd of stupid. Because I'll be honest with you, the cost to build that unit was $200,000. Mm -hmm. Where does the cost approach come into this dialogue? And I'll be honest with you, I, you know, uh, and I've talked to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, I've had meetings with them, and, and, um, and, and also the Appraisal Institute, and I believe that the comp is not the holy grail. And I believe that the cost approach should be somehow considered in these dialogues. I really do. Um, because there should be some sort of a little balancing act to check what did it really cost to build, and then you know, where, where is the fair market value, whatever fair market value is. So fair market value. What a willing seller is willing to pay, and what a willing buyer is uh, willing to sell for, and what a willing buyer is willing to buy for. And tell me if there's any transaction in the market today where that is the case. It's usually not. Not in this market, because it's a short sale, it's a bank owned, it's a divorce, whatever it is. And those, aren't, those are not willing sellers. Those are people, that's under duress. That's a duress. Remember that from your real estate test? Mm 